Hey, folks, and welcome to another episode of the Hungry Bleak Podcast. I am Antonio Pomares, and how are you doing? How's your week been? I hope it's been great. I hope you've had a smooth ride. Hope nothing really wacky or crazy has happened. The weather's getting nicer. We're getting closer and closer to uh, summer. This is actually, um, as I record this, I am realizing that this will be Memorial Day weekend. Yay! Except for, for the people who live on the Jersey Shore which I am one of them. Um, no, and not and Jersey Shore is not like the TV show. It's not all like that, I promise you. Um, but yeah, it can be a little off-putting. But we're getting to that point. So enjoy this kind of mild weather now because soon we're all going to be incredibly hot, sweaty, and trying to re-up on deodorant and our um, perfor- perfume, cologne, eau de toilette, whatever it is that you choose to do, okay? Yeah, that's drink plenty of water. That's all I can say. Drink plenty of water because, yeah, I I I don't enjoy the summertime. I like spring. This has been like a kind of a nice spring. It's been enough where I can wear shorts. I could even wear joggers if I wanted to. I've had on some thin hoodies, my thin zip up hoodies. I like it. It's cool. It's great. This is what I enjoy. You know what else I enjoy? Comic books, comic book news, things that are going on. So let's get into it, shall we, folks? So, <clears throat> comic book news. Let's start with. Creed comic is officially coming to boom. So we all know um, Creed, which is a spinoff of uh, the Rocky franchise. So there's now a Creed franchise, which is great. Uh, and this is going to be like a um, part of the Creed franchise universe. We've had three Creed movies. So now we're going to be getting a comic book that's officially from boom. I'm looking forward to this. I haven't seen the third movie. I'd have to see the third movie. I'll probably end up rewatching Creed one and two because I really enjoy the movies. Um, Sometimes I can be hit or miss with uh, Michael B. Jordan's uh, acting, but I've enjoyed him in the Creed movies. It's been a great platform for him to get him even like more out there. And I'm, I'm digging. I also understand, I believe there's going to be an an anime for Creed. So that's going to be part of that Creed uh, universe as well. This is awesome. Uh, But he's going to be, he's going to serve as creative director of uh, the, of the new story. It's going to have uh, Latanya Morgan, who did Dark Blood, who, yes, huge fan of. And AMT's Walking Dead. Oh, so I did not believe, did not know that. Okay. Oh, okay. I see you. Uh, and this is going to be 10 years after the events of Creed 3. Um, Adonis is out of the ring, but not out of the game as he trains along with his uh, manager wife, Bianca, his daughter, Amara. I think that's going to be great. I love the idea of it still being in the family, but then also it the, the, uh, the main... Uh, protagonist, the main character, is going to be a woman. Uh, I love that. You know, this is going to be great. These are some of the covers that are going to be for Creed. Oof, that one right there. That's the oof. That one right there with that sh- Southpaw for life. That's it right there. Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely going to be, yeah, I'm definitely going to be getting in, in on this. I really want to check this out. This just looks so dope and dynamic. And again, I love the idea. This one is dope as well. I'm definitely loving this cover of Creed and Amara. Yeah, this is going to be hot. I want to check this out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. Like I said, I still have to watch the third movie. But if you're expanding your universe like this and going out of the way to do a comic for this big movie... I'm there. I'm excited to see what, because Michael B. Jordan is now, he's been producing, he actually directed Creed 3 as well. So I want to see what he could do in this realm, it's comic books, and then also this anime to expand out into different mediums. That's what I would, oh, that's like, that's a dream, like spread out into everything, you know, just get people seeing all of that product and getting more and more people in that you can have on these projects to get them jobs, get them out there, get them seen get more and more of, um, of people whose names you don't hear, but that you should hear. I think this is a fabulous idea. I'm here. I'm for it. Let's go. Let's, let's rock. Let's do what we got to do. Next up, Distillery. Okay, so Distillery is this, um, how do I put it? It's going to be this new, it's going to be this new kind of publishing company that's being headed by a lot of heavy hitters in comics. I mean, it's like a murderer's row. It's like all like, I mean, you've got uh, there. 
it, it's like a who's who. They're going to be putting out their first ever release. Um, it's going to be called The Devil's Cut. Now, The Devil's Cut doesn't have anything to do with a satanic meaning. The Devil's Cut is a term used um, by uh, people who uh, do, I believe it's um, whiskey or bourbon, um, who, who are in the distillery business. And when they put it in the barrels, uh, the amount that is soaked in to the barrel, the wood in the barrels, is called the devil's cut. I remember hearing about that a couple years ago during a commercial. And I thought that was a really, really smart way of talking about it, a really, really cool phrase. So that's what this, this comic is going to be called. It's going to be called The Devil's Cut. It's going to be a one shot, 72 pages, I believe. Um, it's going to be coming out at the end of August, I think. And it's going to have a huge roster of people, not just some of the some of the contributors, uh, excuse, excuse me, not just some of the the, um, the people that founded uh, Distillery, but also a lot of just people who are just going to be friends of the people as well. I mean, look at this name as contributors for Devil's Cut. This is um, Mirka and 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 all off, excuse me, Brian Azzarello, uh, Mark Bernard Bernardin, probably butchering his name, um, Elsa Torreira, Becky Clunin, Lee Garbit, Jock, Joel Jones. Tula Latte, uh, Jamie McKenzie. I mean, the, the the list goes on. Oh, Stephanie Phillips, who I'm a huge fan of. Scott Snyder, James Attinian the Fourth. What? I didn't realize that. Like, it's this huge roster of people. Uh, this has been kind of a controversial. Uh, may, maybe not controversial. Maybe divisive is a better term to use. Uh, the idea of distillery. Uh, this will be something that will be coming out digitally as well as physically in bookstores towards the end of August. I, I want to keep my eye out for this because I want to see what distillery does. Like I said, you have this huge roster of, like I said, it's a murderer's row. It's just everybody's hitting, you know, home runs left and right, honestly. And for them to all go into this company and all to go in on this, on this one project, their first release, if this sets a huge precedent, everything you do after this has to be a one. If this hits the mark and not just on a curiosity level, but on a acclaim um, as far as like fans and reviewers and critics and such of, of comics go. And if it's a big hit on both sides of the fence, this could be a huge game changer. I don't and I don't mean just people who are buying this just out of curiosity or just want to see what will this be about or as a collector's item. Oh, this was the first the first actual release from. That's the way I want to see what this is. I mean, like people who are actually talking about the comic in a positive note. And if it's a huge hit, I want to see what this will do. This could be, again, another game changer because it's like I said, the names that are on here are huge, are huge. This is big. So we'll see what comes up for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I am excited. Uh, we're going to also going to be talking about Kickstarter. Bryce Gold. Uh, who was the, um, I believe, the head content? Uh, who was the content head for the Comicsology Originals? Uh, he was. He has actually been recruited by Kickstarter to work on their comic book division. Kickstarter, uh, the comic book division has become a huge part of their platform. Let, let's be honest. I mean, there's like a new Kickstarter every five minutes. I cover some of them, but I couldn't possibly cover all of them. So that's become a huge part of uh, Kickstarter's model and has been what has gotten their name out there the most. Let's be honest. You figured during the pandemic, when a lot of publishers had stopped creating comics, they had to put everything on hold because they didn't know what was going on. Nobody really knew. Indie people were still putting out comics, still putting out Kickstarter, especially during that time when you wanted you wanted something that was going to come to you at home, whether it was digitally or whether it was a physical copy. And you also were able to just hit an app on your phone and you could pledge to them. You were doing something twofold. You were pre-ordering a comic and whatever um, special add-ons that you got. And you were also getting, <clears throat> excuse me, and you were also getting these um the, the, these these dreams that were being helped to create for these creators. So it was kind of a twofold thing, and it was awesome. So, yeah, this is not a huge surprise. I've gone on Kickstarter to look at other things. The two things I know that I've pledged to personally have been comics, and I've pledged to a couple of video games because I wanted to see these games get made because they were black creators. Uh, one was, um, I believe, a black... Uh, it, it, it was a black girl's um, uh, the gaming thing. 
And I was like, oh, definitely bet. I didn't want the game because I knew I was going to play because it, it was a PC game anyway, but you know, that's beside the point. But I wanted to pledge because I wanted to help them create this. I wanted them to 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 create this game, to fulfill their, their goal and a dream. And hopefully that was a stepping stone for more to for a stepping stone for them for for more in the gaming industry, for more of that, for more fanfare, for more of their names just getting out there. I wanted that. So it's very important. So, yeah, I'm not surprised by this at all uh, that they starting to need these these uh, these names in the industry to help. Um, he's the head of comics now. And this is not uh, a small job. This is going to be a big job. It's going to be a bigger too, bigger too. You figure, let's look at a couple of the comics that have come from Kickstarter, not just indie comics that are incredible and that have been getting um, fanfare. Let's talk about ones that have celebrities attached to them. Uh, you have Berserk, which had Keanu Reeves. I believe there was also one for Oscar Isaacs. I'm just mentioning those two because those are two that come to my mind ahead of time that have celebrities as part of them. They were two huge comics. Berserk alone. Excuse me. Excuse me, folks. I'm up every morning ridiculously early. But those two comics alone are huge things. As having the celebrities, and they made a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Now, let's look at the comics that are on there on a regular basis, consistent, consistent, doing consistent numbers. Uh, you have uh, Wingless Comics. You have Ray Comics. You have a 133 Art Publishing. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have uh, Dream Fury Comics. Okay. You have uh, uh, Concrete Comics. Those companies right there are companies that are, again, doing big numbers and are consistently, consistently, consistently performing. And they're constantly on these lists of projects we love. So if these are, so if this is what's happening and these are projects that are coming out and you're getting consistent, consistent, consistent pledges and these creators and they're constantly making their goals and they're doing this and constantly making their goals and also exceeding them. Yeah, you definitely start, you need to have this division. I'm sure they may have had something, uh, uh, before comics really made it big, but comics have really made Kickstarter's name from what I can see and from what I understand. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so, truthfully. So, yeah, so that's what we're going to do as far as comic book news. Um, there's just been a lot of, there's just been a lot going on. So, look, Kickstarters, like I said, are big. So let's talk about a couple of Kickstarters, shall we? Let's talk about a couple of Kickstarters that are really hitting the note right now. Let's just say hitting the note. Is that even a term? Is it? Is it really? Uh, whatever. So the first one we got coming up is Changa and the Jade Obelisk. One through three. This is from 133 Art Publishing. Look, I've talked about this comic. You know the drill. Changa and the Jade Obelisk uh, is based on a Milton Davis uh, series of novels. Uh, this comic series is an adaptation, and it's awesome. The cover that we see here is from the great uh, Marcus, the visual, uh, Mar Marcus Williams, obviously, whose art is always diabolical. Uh, so Changa and his crew are trying to figure out what's going on with the Jade Obelisk, and they're on this, this like a kind of a sword and sorcerer adventure think of the old sinbad movies that's kind of the the root of this and i used to love those movies as a kid and the comics have not disappointed at all look as i've said before go and they've even got new t-shirts that are going to be out i love that windbreaker is awesome look the check the art is always beautiful and it has a beautiful it has a um because of the colors that are usually involved um, a lot of green, which I feel is very earthy and very, feels very rooted. It's a very calming, almost like a comfort comic with a very, very um, epic adventure feel. And I love that type of mix. It's awesome. And you can see there we've got more of the art and more of the story to, to come uh, from Mateo Illuminati and Carlos Lopez. It's just, it's beautiful. And it's, uh, and, and it's been adapted. It's written by Robert Jeffrey. If you know, you know. If I got to keep telling y'all why Robert is one of the best in the business, then I feel like you're not listening to me. You're not. These are some of the the uh, new... Look, they, they got a, a flight jacket. Look at that. It, it's beautiful. And you can see, uh, like, these are some of the tiers that we're giving on, some of the rewards. You have a digital print as well. 
You have the catch-up bundles. You have the variant, which is by Marcus Williams. Then you have the add-ons. The t You know I got the T-shirt, right? You know I had to get the T-shirt. And you'll also see uh, the figures as well. Um, th these are some of the special edition hoodies, which look beautiful also. You have the, uh, the, the coin boxes. You have the collector's prints. And then you have the team. Like I said, this is Milton Davis. Uh, this is uh, Jason Reeves, who's the art director and publisher. And you have Robert Jeffrey. Look, look at this guy. Look at this guy. And you'll notice in this picture, who do you see that little bit of somebody there? Let's just say the, the little bit of that person who's in that picture, let's just say that they're kind of hungry. If you know, you know. And this is a Matteo Illum Illuminati. Incredible beard. My God, this man's beard is a just diabolical. And Carlos Lopez, kind of jealous of those trees in the back. And that's awesome. And they give you a diagram of where the funds go to, which I do enjoy. I, I like that. You know, this is a, a this is one of the consistent um, Kickstarters that always delivers and is always on point. So if you're going to go with a Kickstarter um, and try something new, what have you, this would be one of the ones I would definitely recommend, honestly. Now, we're also going to be talking about justice. Of course we are. Of course we are. Justice, the fall one through four. This is from, <clears throat> excuse me. This is from uh, Wingless Comics. Talked about justice. Um, the angel who is, uh, is it actually, I'll read you the story. Justice is an action-packed adventure that follows a, descendant a descendant archangel whose time on earth helps him to realize the line between heaven and hell isn't as black and white as he believed which is very true you can damn that cover is ridiculous i would love that on a t-shirt jeez you should know what the hell and these are some of the interiors that we're going to get now ob obviously of course oh wait we're going to get caliber number one Ooh, bet i'm on this Obviously, this this cover is an homage to uh, Purple Rain. Love it. And these are some of the interiors for Cali for Caliburn. I love it. I love this book. Um, these are some of the rewards that you'll get with number four. There's also going to be a trade paperback uh, that will have one through four plus zero and a half issue. I absolutely love that. You get another a trade paperback as well. The Saga of Nightfall, which I think is awesome. You get digital rewards, uh, justice cameos. So depending on what tier you go to, you'll be getting all of this. There's, there's Avery, one of my favorite characters. And the team as well. Uh, we got Brian, Brian Batts, uh, Jay Lambert, Fabio Simao, Anesta Radula, Ruin Makers. Love it. And you also always have the, the different tiers as well for support for the rewards. This is another one that is awesome. I love it. And it introduced so many characters um, with Justice and then also with Nightfall, which you would read together in, in tandem. I think it was awesome to have them together. I truly enjoy this. Folks, as always, um, in between uh the well in, in the episode description i will have the links for these um kickstarters please go take advantage <clears throat> excuse me and check them out because they're awesome go pledge you could pledge as little or as much as you want and like i said you can go through the tiers and you can actually there are different add-ons so you if you have a tier that you like and you don't see what you want on that tier you hit that and then you'll it'll show you all the add-ons that you'll be able to add boom here boom here boom here here and you'll be going, and that's fun because they're really great comics. Summertime is a great time to read. I will be taking a break soon. Like I've said, I will be doing my season finale in a few weeks, and then I will be having a summer read list that I have that I will be doing um, along with maybe a couple of other projects, but um, I'm going to be taking it easy this summer. Uh, last summer was hard on me. Um, the summer before that was a little hard on me too with everything going on in my personal life, and I'll need that time to just relax. So what I plan on doing is having that read list. I think at a certain point, I'll actually give a read list um, on here just to be like, hey, this this is my read list. This is what I have to do just to relax and calm my mind and just to catch up on things I haven't had to been able to catch up on because there have been so many comics coming out and so many things going on. 
Um, but I enjoy it no matter what. Um, yeah, so that's definitely what I, I think the last year I had a summer read list, but it doesn't work out as well as I'd hoped because again, life happens and what have you. Folks, I'm going to take a quick break, but I want you to listen um, to this message right here. Whether it was witchery, some modern science, or a demon let loose from hell, I am unable to decide. Williams Bell from an authenticated history of the Bell Witch. Who, who's there? From 1817 to 1821, an entity calling itself Kate tormented the Bell family of West Tennessee. There is still no widely accepted explanation for this haunting. Coming summer 2024 on the new hit audio drama Afflicted, the Bell Witch returns to haunt a family in 1960s Tennessee. But only if we raise enough money to pay our cast and crew a living wage. Help bring this haunting to life and snag exclusive rewards like limited edition supporter t-shirts, producer credits, and more at afflictedaudio.com support. But do it quickly. Some perks are limited only to early supporters. Hey, folks, and welcome back. So, hey, we're going to start up with our comic book reviews. How's that sound? Does that sound good to you? Does that sound all right? All right, cool. So we're going to start with uh, the gimmick from Ahoy Comics. So if you know me, you know I love uh, uh, professional wrestling. I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. So this is the gimmick from Ahoy Comics. Uh, this is a new company I'm not really familiar with, but I love the fact of the gimmick. A gimmick is usually what a professional wrestler will use as their character, um, whether it's um, someone who is very arrogant, whether they wear a certain color, like um, Mark Calloway, who is The Undertaker. His gimmick was The Undertaker, didn't really talk much at first, and he became, you know, um, the American badass that went back to The Undertaker, old school, anything like that. Um, so this is, like I said, from Ahoy Comics. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is from Joanne Starr, Alana Gogo, who, Gogao, hope I'm pronouncing that properly, who is the artist, Rob Steen, who is a letterer, and this is created by Joanne Starr and Elena Gogao. I want to say Gogao. Hope I'm pronouncing it properly. If I'm not, I apologize. So basically, this is the story of a professional wrestler who, in the middle of the ring, unfortunately, gets angry with one of his opponents and kills him with super strength. Once this happens, he's so nervous and so embarrassed at showing the the, uh, the powers that he, he literally gets up on the turnbuckle. And I thought when he got up on the turnbuckle, I thought he was going to like do a moonsault or just like jump into the crowd. I didn't realize until I reread the comic that he flies away. I did not realize this. So when this happens, he runs, he goes to his car and he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, he's trying to figure out, trying to figure out his, his mentor gets in the car and he's like, Oh my God, I don't know what I did. I, I, I did this. And he's like, well, and the old mentor's like, look, man, I've seen a lot of stuff in this business and professional wrestlers do have these incredible stories. They really, really do. Um, the stories are amazing. Honestly, I've, we've all seen dark side of the ring and other stories like this. And so he's like, look, we're going to, you need cash. So we're going to go down to Mexico. You're going to, you know, wear a mask. We're, we're going to do luchador stuff and you're going to get some money there. So while this is happening, we see a couple in New Jersey, uh, a man and a woman, and the woman turns out to be his mother. And she's like, oh, he doesn't call me, he doesn't anything. So she tries to like use this as a way to try to get him to call her or to interact. But there's something going on with the mother, something nefarious as well, along with this elderly sick man who I think may be his father. I'm not sure or possibly his grandfather. I'm not really sure. And we also find out that after this murder of this, um, of one of his opponent who was playing a Nazi character, um, that was his gimmick, but it turns out that the guy was Latino. His last name was Lopez. I, when I read that, I was like, wait, what? So these two FBI agents go to the man's house to find out what's going on and to figure and talk to his daughter whose daughter hadn't really spoken to him in years. So then you find out the daughter goes looking for the guy 
and also he has these FBI agents on him. I love stories with, uh, and it turns out that one of the FBI agents is a, is a professional mess, is a professional wrestling fan, a Mark. I love stories about professional wrestling. Um, like I don't read the WWE stuff. I love stuff that's like a story, and then there's more of a story to it. Like um, there's one fall from Solid Comics, which is about um, a werewolf. Uh, no, it's about this guy who goes into a wrestling match and turns out that his opponent is a werewolf. They find out that the guy in the wrestling match is actually like Lazarus. He's, he's immortal. He's able to be resurrected. He comes up. Then you have one that's like uh, do a power bomb, which it still blows my mind. I have to read that probably next year, like to reread it. Awesome. I love comics like this because they're just fun. And I want to know more about the story of what the hell like, where do you get these powers from? Like, where did any of this go? Like, I absolutely love this. So this is one I would say, definitely, if you have the opportunity, go and check out <clears throat> the gimmick from Ahoy Comics. I think two issues are out, if I am correct. Um, Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's what's happening right now. Or two issues are out. Like I said, go and get this comic. It's just really, really fun. The next one we have up is Cold War. This is from uh, Marvel. Now, this is a crossover event. There are going to be, I think, six issues. There's going to be Cold War, um, which is uh, part one. Then there's Alpha and there's Omega. So there's a few different ones out there. This is from various artists um, and, and, and ver various creators. Basically, the gist of the story is it goes between Captain America um, Sentinel of Liberty and Captain America Symbol of Truth, which are Captain America Sentinel of Liberty is the Steve Rogers comic. Captain America Sentinel, excuse me, Captain America Symbol of Truth is the Sam Wilson comic. You can probably figure out which one I'm reading. So in the, because I'm not reading the, um, the Steve Rogers series, I had to kind of play catch up, but they kind of give you a catch up of what's going on. So in Sam's comic, you see at the end of, I think, maybe issue 10 or what have you, Nomad, um, Ian, who is Captain Roger's son from Dimension Z. I know, I know, I know, I know. Is there to help Sam in one of his missions in Mohanda because there's a lot going on around there. It turns out that the, that the big bad of the last two arcs for Sam's comic have been Hunter, who is the white wolf of Wakanda. Um, he was a member of the secret police. He's also uh, uh, to, uh, King T'Challa's adopted brother. He's planning this big takeover. And also with Mal, me knowing, James Barnes, Bucky, which I don't like to call him now, which a soldier is now being called the Revolution. And he was part of this organization called the Outer Circle, I think it is. And Cap was meant to be, was and Cap Steve Rogers was supposed to be part of that at one point. But they, but he said no. So they went with five other like soldier assassins who were each a point of the star that is represented on Cap's shield. I didn't know that. And also the outer ring is, is represented on Cap's shield as well. So Hunter and the Revolution, aka formerly known as Winter Soldier, have bonded together to take over. And to right or wrong, they both have different agendas, but they're both working together because they have, well, I guess they both have different agendas, similar goals, have you. So they end up using, they end up going to, or using uh, all the denizens or the monsters from Dimension Z to be their soldiers in this war. So the revolution and White Wolf are in Dimension Z as their rulers, but more so, uh, Hunter White Wolf is like the king there after Ar Armin Zola's death. So they kidnap Ian, take him to Dimension Z. So Cap has to deal with the PTS of going back to Dimension Z along with Sam, Misty, and Sharon. And Peggy kidnapped Ian, Pe Peggy Carter kidnapped Ian to take him back to Dimension Z. And Sam and Misty are dating or in a relationship, which I love. Uh, Steve and Sharon are in a relationship, I believe. Um, again, I'm not sure. 
So, yeah, I don't read a lot of crossover comics like that because I just don't have the time or truthfully the, the funds to do it. I just don't want to. I'll be honest with you. Um, but this is one that I wanted to read because it was interesting and I wanted to see where Steve Rogers cap was at, even though I'm not going to read the whole series, but it's like, they go back and forth. So there's cap. So there's cold war alpha, which is the first part of it. Then you have one, two, three, four, which will be the regular issues, which will ping pong between captain America sentinel of truth and captain America symbol, excuse me, captain America sentinel of Liberty, which is a Steve Rogers and captain America symbol of truth which is sam wilson they'll ping pong between those and then there will be a cold war omega issue which will be the end of it and then we'll have the fallout from all of that i'm enjoying it so far uh i'm up to, i read captain america sentinel of liberty number 12 so i'm um so I think that's what four, I'm like three issues in, four, three, I don't know, but I'm enjoying it. I like it. It's not really a crazy read, so it's awesome, but it's cool to see the different creators that are in there, different artists and everything too. And I like this kind of espionage thing as well going on with the two of them. And I'm just a fan of, I'm a fan of this Sam Wilson and him and Misty and Misty being, a, Misty being like a part of this, this, some, um, this government group, everything. I like it. I'm enjoying it. And I had no idea about Winter Soldier just going ridiculous um, and coming to the, the revolution now and being like this, this like uh, villain and having this kind of like a cape kind of thing going on with a suit now. I don't know what's going on with you, baby, but I mean, you know, what do you, man? Do you? Do you? Do you? I, I don't know. I, I, I also don't, don't know what to say that. Next up, we have uh, Spirit World. This is from DC Comics. This is um, another spinoff of the of the uh, of the Dawn of DC comics, and this is the We Are Legends comics, which are to showcase um, Asian American and um, and uh, Pacific Island uh, characters. This is uh, number one of this. This is from uh, writer Aly Alyssa Wong, uh, colorist is Sebastian Chung. Uh, cover is I hope I'm pronouncing names. I apologize if I am butchering them. Um, Haining and Chang, uh, and they have a lot of beautiful variants. Wow, these are awesome. Letterer is um Janice Chang, uh, and group editor is Ben Abernathy, and editor is Jessica Chen. So this is the 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 lead character that we have is non-binary, which I love. Uh, and their name is Xanth. I hope I pronounce their their name correctly. There are a a, um, a denizen, a uh, citizen of the spirit world, where they are able to kind of traverse back. Now, they were caught here when there was a portal that opened up, and it kind of switched people. So Xanth is now um, trapped here, and Batgirl, Cassandra Kane is trapped in the spirit world. So this is going to be a five issue series. I want to say now there are three, two other series that are in this kind of realm in in this um uh, we are legends kind of thing. Uh, one is called the Vigil, where it's a group of I think it's about four or five heroes, and then there's and I believe they're Southeast Asian. I want to say, and then there's one that's um, called City Boy, which is about a Korean character, which I want to read also because these characters because I love the art. They look really cool. Um, and they just look like a lot of fun, truthfully. Uh, yeah, so we go through, we meet the character of Xanth, and they're helping this a little child in the rain, and they're able to create um, things out of paper. So if they have a little paper object, uh, they can, with their magic, they can make it a real object, where, and then it gets transported to the... the there's something about the paper and the spirit world in our world. So they go into the shop to get some help from the shop owner. And who's there but our favorite of uh, Cad, <laughs> John Constantine, is going to help them out. Meanwhile, we go to see what Batgirl's going through in the spirit world. And they have to fight everyone there because they're alive. And the scent of being alive is like, oh, it, it, it's it's very attracting to all the denizens or all the the um uh the demons and, and miscreants there and they want to eat because after they like you, we can smell you you're you're alive you smell wonderful so that's their thing 
So while there, uh, Cassandra meets these two people um, who help her and try to hide her and try to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, Xanth in the in the, in our world finds out that there's a lot more going on than what they figured, and they fight with Constantine against uh, these malicious spirits who are trying to kill them once they find this person that's supposed to help them. But that person looks like, I believe they're dead or being taken over by these spirits. I'm not sure. And towards the end of the comic, we find out that Xanth may have a different name, but also that they were thought to have been dead by their mother for about 15 years. Turns out that they aren't dead. And the mother's like, oh my God, you're here. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, oh yeah. So this, so this is the, uh, the three, uh, comics for this we are legends like so the spirit world like i was telling you and there's vigil and then there's city boy so i want to read the other two as well because they look awesome absolutely love the art bright bold um i love the again the almost american um manga feel to it i love the martial arts aspect of it as well i love it feels like a fantasy when i think of fantasy and um and uh, the uh the asian cinema the first movie i think of well actually there are two crunch tiger hidden dragon and also Storm Riders, two of my favorite movies. I love Storm Riders. It's just one of those movies where I'm like, yes, 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 please, yes. I will take some more of that. Yes, 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 yes. It just has a beautiful feel to it. So I'm a huge fan of this comic. I love where they're going. I love the fact we have a non-binary uh, Asian lead. I love the dress, the character design as well. I'm always into a character design. How did we get here? What were the decisions that we made for this character to be dressed like this? What was it? I, I love the dress. I love the big ass sword too that comes from the little paper sword. That Even that as well. So I'm a fan of this. I'm going to keep reading it. I'm happy. Thank you very much. It's awesome. Let's go from there. So those are my three uh, picks right now for what you should be reading. I think they're great. They're awesome. But let me go back and hit you up with a Flashback Friday pick. So a uh, few, I'm trying to think of how many years ago this was. This was uh, many, many years ago, I want to say. Yeah. So my pick is going to be Damon from Boom Studios. You know, it's a theme with Boom, right? Right. They just do really great stuff, honestly, folks. So Damon from Boom Comics. Uh, this was just an all. Uh, God, I love this comic. Jeez. Um, Damon from Boom Comics. Basically, the story of Damon is <clears throat> that um, while vampires are sleeping during the day and slumbering or what have you, they're not able to take care of their business during the day. So what they need is they need um, almost like a guardian's. Or our, um, I don't know what you what you call it, um, aids to help them during the day. That's where the daemon come in, and each uh, vampire family have a daemon that they use. So this is from Matt Gagnon, uh, Michael Allen Nelson, and Brian Stelfreeze. You can tell by the art, this is Brian Stelfreeze. This was twelve issues, I want to say. We open up with the main character um, trying to take care of some business for his vampire family. And he ends up having to kill another vampire with sunlight. And we see that, you know, the daily things that they have to do, they have to go and collect um, tithes at times. They have to clean up messes. They might have to pay off or bribe officials. They might have to fend off hunters. There's a lot that Damon have to do. And we start to see that each family has a different group of Damon and how they use them. Um, there are some that are more like military. There are some that are more like aristocratic. They're just a bunch of different types. I absolutely loved this story because it was so cool to see the other side of it. Not the, It does show the vampires, but it shows more of the daemon and the people that are there during the day and what they have to do for vampires. I wish this series had gone on longer. I wish we had even had some type of maybe um, like really... Um, more definitive ending for the series i just thought it was awesome to see it's just beautiful yeah i'm just uh, god just a huge and it's stealth freezes art stealth freeze just does things with art that are just uh, like magic i swear i just yeah this is just one of those comics i was a huge fan of <sighs> still a fan of it truthfully i just i, just, I still am a fan of it it's just awesome 
it's just yeah just look at it and yeah so like i said this was 12 issues i believe um really fun had a great time with it and it was awesome so yeah so if you can find you should be able to find it in any of the stores i don't think there was a um compendium where it was all of them together unfortunately but you can find the two trades or you can find the single issues i would just go with the two trades truthfully if you could it's much easier i was reading this as it was coming out so that's why i have like the, the digitals and such that i have like a special um i think a new york comic-con um exclusive variant too uh from you because this came out like this came out when this was like more than five this was like more than six or seven years ago i want to say so yeah damon from boom studios so that's it for the comic book reviews and kickstarters but folks like i said it's friday i want to make sure that you're doing okay that you're doing all right have you had your water have you taken your pills whether it's for a physical mental or emotional ailment you know i want to make sure that you're okay that's the point i want to make sure that you're feeling all right i'm not trying to please you i just want you to be the best you that you can be my tip for this week is truthfully to sit down, sit down and take a breath. Seems simple, but these things never are. It can do so much for you to just at the, when everything's going, you just go, you know what? I don't care if it's with a cup of tea, a cup of water, you just sit there, but just sit. And take that breath. It can give you a point of stillness that can help you to anchor the rest of your day or the rest of your hour or however you're counting each day down. But please do that because it's very important that you take care of yourself. Okay. It's more important than you could ever possibly realize. Believe me, I wish I had taken more of those steps, but I didn't. But now I know as I get older, I realize there are days when I'm standing up and I'm like, hey, you know what? And I go and I sit down. I have to, or else I will lose my mind. And that is important. All right. So sit down, take a breath and do you please. So let's talk about what's on my plate. So this week, this is a bit of a different one. Uh, there is a place um, near me called Mina's Grill and Market. It's it's in a building where there used to be a quick check. Beautiful place. It's on Wyckoff Ave in Eatontown. It's Brazilian owned and the food is amazing. You go in there. They open up at 5 a.m., 5 or 6 a.m. Um, actually, I could just look on here and it would tell me. Do -do 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 -do. So you go and you open up, and this place is amazing. Um, oh, I didn't know that they offer delivery. Wow, that's awesome. I did not realize that at all. Great. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. They do breakfast, and they do brunch. They have pizza there. They have dinner. Um, I haven't been there for breakfast or brunch, but I absolutely love the food here. Uh, they've got... It, it depends on the day. They have different menus. Have, they have like freshly baked rolls and pastries. They'll have cheesecakes there. They'll have um, everything from rice and beans to uh, flank steak to chicken to pulled pork. Uh, like I said, they'll have pizza. They'll even have the side thing. They have like hot dogs and everything like that. And they're also like a little market. Well, they'll have like um, fruit. They'll have like uh, coffee there. They've got like a like a, um, a storage center where they'll have, you know, sodas and bottles of water and ginger ale, what have you. Market, beautiful place. I love it. When you go in, they automatically are greeting you. They're, they're like, what can I get you? What do you need? They have, they give you great portions. For the price that you're paying, they're giving you incredible portions and the food is spot on. My God, they're the beans and the rest, they'll have like black beans, um, red beans, they'll have the white rice. A little bit of everything there, and it's beautiful. I mean, I can't. Excuse me, folks. I apologize. You can't go wrong with the menu here. It's incredible, and I always enjoy the food there. Uh, I've been a few times, and I've got my mother some stuff too. My mother's not a big bean person, well, at least for black beans. 
Um, I want to actually do the black beans there, but they have pork in them, so I don't eat them. But I normally love black beans. I go and I'll get the I'll get the rice. I get the the yeah, the red beans. I'll get you know the chicken or the or or um or the steak. Uh, they've had everything from like I've seen fish there, what have you. They'll even have things uh, depending on if there's a holiday coming up uh, where there are dietary restrictions, what have you. They'll have food there to accommodate for that as well. I just love the whole atmosphere, the vibe, the smell is like I can smell it now, and it smells incredible. This is making me hungry to go over there now, seriously. But if you can and you're in the area, go and check out Mina's Grill and Market in Eaton Town. You will not be disappointed. I can promise you, you will not be disappointed. They're great. I'll have the uh, the link for them in the episode description, as always, folks, because that's the type of person I am, obviously. So on that note, folks, can I talk to you for a second? Can I hit you for a second for a minute? Can I talk to you for a little bit about your time? to be announced but it's true whatever you're doing wherever you're at do the best you can with what you got which is always so what i say and leave it better than you found it so the next person can do even better and leave it better than they found it and so on and so forth it'll be a beautiful thing that we can do and it helps us all and it makes it just brings more of a community and support because I love seeing things get better instead of things getting worse. Let's do our best to make things the best that they can be. Let's not just sit there hemming and hawing and being negative. Let's, and it's okay to criticize something, obviously, but constructive criticism, but also have something that might be a way to make that thing better. You know what I mean? Let's do that. Let's do the best we can to make something better than it was when we got there. Leave it better than you found it. That's pretty much the gist of that. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, folks, look, thank you so very much. It's been a great day. I have talked way too much already. But there's a lot of news. There's a lot going on. I wanted to tell you all everything and I wanted to review the comics. I wanted to tell you about all the things that are here. And I feel good. I feel at peace. I feel content. I feel blissful. In the episode description, I'll have the links for everything, the restaurants, um, the Kickstarters, and also for the Afflicted uh, fundraiser for season two. It's an incredible series. We had Tanya Ransom on here. Thank you, Tanya, for um, allowing me to run that trailer as a little uh, thing for you. I'm going to start doing things like that. Every episode, folks, we're going to be doing that because there's a lot of great things out there that you're not hearing about. And no one is trying to talk about them like that. But I am because that's what separates me from your faves. But that's probably why I'm your new fave, right? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all, whether you're a new listener, whether you're one of my faithful pancake heads, you know I love y'all. I will see you all later. Folks, remember, do the best you can with what you got, because in the end, that's all that you get. All right? I will see y'all later. A little shoulder shake. A little shoulder shake. All right now. Got you.